got your controls. You need some shoes. And a blanket. And your blanket. Duh. Good job, Hensley. Putting on your boots. <laughs> What was that? Boot. Oh, it was your boot. <laughs> <laughs> Let it rip, tater chip. It poop. Your your shoe did. It made a noise, didn't it? You ready to go see a kitty cat today? Aunt I Miranda's? got a pet camera. So if you've been following us for the last six months, you know we obviously have an Airstream. But what you may not know is we traveled in a Class A motorhome before this, and we still have that motorhome. <laughs> we've been trying to sell that motorhome pretty much since we've had this Airstream and have not had great luck with it. We've had people come look at it, want it, not be able to get financing, not want to make the drive, any number of reasons, come really close, make us an offer that was below what we wanted even. Um, so we've been just maybe like a few thousand away on a few people. And at this point, looking back, I wish I'd taken those offers. But it's gotten pretty cold the last month or so. And not only do we still have the motorhome, we still have the Subaru that goes behind the motorhome because we wanted to use that as leverage to be able to sell the motorhome as sort of a package deal because this thing is awesome to tow behind a motorhome. It's all wheel drive, it's super light, it's a great size, easy to park. Uh, we have gotten, no kidding, probably like over a dozen offers for the Subaru. I don't think the Subaru would be hard to sell if we wanted to sell the Subaru. But our motorhome has been way harder to sell. So a few reasons I feel like the motorhome hasn't sold yet. Uh, number one, it's like a high-end gas motorhome. And although I still 100% advocate high-end gas motorhomes because we loved this motorhome. Uh, your low-end gas motorhomes don't have as much cargo capacity. This has like 4,000 pounds of cargo capacity. It's on a heavier chassis so it doesn't get blown around by semis. And so the build quality in this is very similar to a diesel um, and you get just that high-end stuff that you wouldn't get on a lot of gas motorhomes. You got like the Amish built cabinets. The AC is a ducted AC so you don't have to listen to AC coming down on you the whole time. You get Italian leather furniture here and in the chairs up in the front. You get this soft padded roof, which doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but there's just something way more homey about that than like the typical, um, it's like a hard plastic, you know, top roof that's on a lot of these. I've got the five star tuner on this, which I think helps as well with the power and regulating uh, what it does as far as the engine, but we've been happy with this. Uh, it gets seven miles a gallon instead of you might get 12 to the gallon with a diesel, but some people actually get 10. But even then, three to five miles a gallon less it's gonna take a long time to get that money back with a diesel. But it's a tough sell, because that's not the norm. People assume gas, cheap, not as well built, can't handle full-time living, not as well long-term, gets blown around the interstate, all that kind of stuff, which is, it doesn't have the storage. Not true with this motor. I think also it's had a hard time because of the location. Uh, we're in a small town. You can't fly a plane into here. You can't really, most people are not gonna swing by where I've got it at my parents' farm to see it. Uh, I have marketed the snot out of it as far as Craigslist and RV Trader and places online. You know, if I was in like a bigger city or something like that, or if I was in like Texas or Florida, it'd be easier. So we're going to be going with plan B on the motorhome, which includes us taking it to a dealer in Huntsville, Alabama uh, to consign it. And basically the way consignment works is we leave the motorhome with them. They show the motorhome, they advertise the motorhome, promote the motorhome. Um, which I don't need that stuff as much. I just need a semi-large city <laughs> with other motorhomes around and I need somebody to help show it while we're out of town. It's clean in here, it's ready to go, but I've still gotta get the slides in, get the jacks up. And uh, I've gotta go meet Marissa. She's dropping Hensley off at her sister's house. We're gonna meet up, hook up the Subaru, and we're gonna head to Huntsville. <laughs> There's lots of things that we're gonna miss about the motorhome, but there's also lots of things we're not gonna miss. <laughs> it seems like this is a pro and a con, I guess. I feel like it's harder in the motorhome when it's hot out for it to stay cool. It's like you've got a, a dash AC, but it's it's gotta heat the, the whole 40 foot motorhome. So I feel like it can get a little hot in here. So I'm not gonna miss that. But also, it's it's really nice that you know if it's really cold outside, you can kind of regulate the temperature inside the motorhome easily, as if you know with with you're pulling something behind you and then you pull in for the night and it's it's really cold inside because it's been cold outside. So 
So a couple things I do not miss about the motorhome. Uh, one is finding places to fill up. I would actually have to plan my routes, which I didn't think about doing because I'm not used to doing that lately. So I have to look for gas stations that have you know, the parallel type pumps that you can just pull through. Um, or I have to be able to get around the pump. So usually I'll actually look ahead of time, plan my route, look at Google Earth or Street View and make sure I can get in and out. But this time, I just kind of winged it. <laughs> but, but we found a place, we're filling up, it's not a big deal. Pro, that's a pro and con of a gas motor home. The pro is you've got more options because it's gas. So if you're in the middle of nowhere, you don't have to look for diesel. You can just look for gas. But the con is you got to look for a gas station where you can get in and out with your rig. I mean, the motorhome has tons of conveniences. I love being able to access the house as we travel. You know, I can get to the convection. I can get to the fridge. I can get to the bathroom. But one of the things that I'm not going to miss is when we boondock and everything slid in, I feel a little trapped. So I liked that the Airstream is a constant. There's no differences. It's just like we're at home and it doesn't feel like we're closed in. And that was always something that I wasn't super excited about. Today's been kind of emotional. Like this was our home and I even walked in and I hadn't been in here in a while so it brought back a lot of memories and emotions and it even smells like home. You've ever sold a house or sold a car and they're kind of emotional but this is like a combo of both. I mean we've not only <laughs> lived in this but we've traveled in this as well so we can look around and know that hey you took us places, you yeah. gave us memories. You know, Hensley played in that room or Hensley fell asleep on that couch. You know we watched this here, did this, you know it's there's memories everywhere in this thing and that's that's hard. We've loved it. Just got to get it to Huntsville, right? Yeah. And say goodbye. Hopefully. Hopefully, but not hopefully. We'll just say hopefully. <laughs>
we dropped off the motorhome. Kind of like saying goodbye again. It's like we've broken up with the twice now. <laughs> Some of our decisions have worked out in our favor and we've actually come ahead and then sometimes it's a learning experience and I think this is definitely going to be a learning experience for us. That's the thing about taking chances. I mean, sometimes you come out ahead, sometimes you don't. I think most of the time we come out ahead enough that it's still worth it to take those chances. It gave us a lot to learn from it though. I mean, we, we know what it's like to have a motor home and we appreciate the things about it. It was a good thing for us to experience that. So we are picking up our van. I've had it over here at Walker Diesel for the most part. Just kind of doing regular tune-up stuff we always try to do when we're back in our hometown. Just like being overly cautious because we would much rather, or I would at least. <laughs> Marissa doesn't like spending it. She's like, why are you getting doing getting stuff done with a van? There's nothing wrong with it. I, I mean, there is anything wrong with it. Right? <laughs> well, it's 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 it runs. It tows the airstream. I want to be overdo it here in town if I can um, and avoid the other stuff. We got the oil change, got a full inspection, and then they also went in and the radiator was pretty pretty clogged up, pretty dirty. So they've cleaned that out, also replaced the air filter, um, all that kind of stuff. I talked to them about maybe some other options, um, but the radiator was so bad. They showed me the picture, it was pretty bad. Uh, the radiator was so bad that they felt pretty confident that for me to at least try it right now the way it is um, with that radiator cleaned out. Should run better as far as heat. Um, not that it's been super bad, but better is always better. Yeah, better always better. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. We're, we're going to part ways. I'm going to take the van, pick up Hensley. And Marissa's... Um, I'm going to have dinner with a friend. That's yeah. why it's fun getting to be in our hometown and catch up. In general, we are really going to miss, and already do miss, and have missed our class Hope A. Hope we get to miss. Hope we get to miss. That's good. That's a good way to put yeah. it. We hope we get to miss our motorhome more. <laughs> and we really want somebody to just be able to enjoy it. And love uh, it like we did. Yeah. I'm going to go pick up Hensley from her aunts. She's been there all day. I'm sure they're ready for me to pick her up. <laughs> I'm sure the cats are too. My hey. sister has cats and Hensley's been chasing oh, them all day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was uh, chasing around trying to hold it when I left, so I'm sure the cat is like... Yeah, the cat's probably ready. Okay. <laughs> Let me go get her and uh, we will catch you guys later. Hey, do, you, hey, do you care if I come inside? Or do you just want to come out here? I'll come out here. He's watching. There he is. That's Daddy's kitty cat. Daddy's kitty cat? Oh, excuse me.